What is going on sports card fiends? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day and today we're here with a video on the fall of modern sports cards. Um, something that's been highly discussed lately. Everyone's in a panic. What's going on? Is it going to crash? Is everything going to zero? Everyone wants to know. So I want to do a video kind of talking about my perspective on the modern market and how I've been prepping for this for a little while. Um, like everything, there's going to be ebbs and flows and with COVID there was obviously a ton of people that got into the market. Long term, I think that's a great thing. Short term, you know, it's going to make for a lot of volatility in terms of how many people are within the market at the time but overall a lot of the panic in my opinion just stems from basketball that is just the clear and away front runner of the sports card market at the moment so that's just kind of the barometer for what's going on do I think that's amazing? No, I don't think so because I think there are plenty of other segments that are doing perfectly fine. However, people are going to stem their base feeling from how that market's doing, sort of. It's a canary in the coal mine situation where people see something and they're they're a little nervous by it and then they start to question what's going on. And in this case, I don't think it's a good indicator. Most people are using modern basketball product to decide where the market's going, where it should be right now. And to me, that's pretty silly. We'll get into more of the reason why, but I mean, just a baseline example as far as how I'm feeling, I have been in the sports card market. I mean, I've loved sports cards for a while, but I've only gotten back into it for the last year and a half or so. With that, I haven't bought any basketball product. I've bought barely any sealed product. I've bought a lot of stuff I'll sit on and I won't open, but there's barely anything I'll open because it just seems so terrible of an expected value. And all of these products with COVID and with the market kind of getting just absolutely gouged, these, these things are to the roof. So of course it's gonna fall back. Like that doesn't seem that crazy to me. Also in addition to that, an equal example of what's going on is PSA is starting to send back lots of cards. And so that acts a lot like modern product getting more supply. Um, it's just more that the market has to take on. And can we do that? I think long-term, yes. Right now, it's kind of iffy, but that's what I want to talk about. Let's go ahead and get on over to Card Ladder. I have an affiliate link down below. If enough people use it, I can use the website for free. So that's cool. So the first example is going to be Luka Doncic Base Prism uh, PSA 10 2018. I'm um, looking here at the graph overall. Um, you can tell that basketball cards have been on a tear for a while. It used to be 60 bucks in a PSA 10 two years ago. Now we're looking at $900 and it peaked at $1,700. So, you know, whenever people say the, the fall of sports cards and everyone starts to panic, I mean, in sections like this where you had cards that were basic, I mean, these could have been $1 to $5 cards any other time of the sports card era a long time ago, and now they're worth $1,800 at their peak, obviously a peak, but still, um, you know, it, it's pretty understandable that that stuff's going to fall whenever it starts to trace back. I mean, take a look at the pop count. It's only going to go up, and there's, I mean, 17,000. Oh, oh, I actually never knew that Card Ladder had this. Well, that's a real-time revelation right there. <laughs> Jesus. So you can see how much the pop's going up, too, and I mean... You can see that it's gone up about 400 in, what is this, last month? So, yeah, it's just constantly cards that the market's going to have to take on, and people are willing to take less and less, because in their minds and where they receive these cards, they might have gotten it for 50 to 100 bucks. So if they can then grade it and sell it for 800 like, that's a no-brainer. They're going to. Another example from the same year, it's going to have an even worse trend line, is Trey Young, um, just along the same exact lines, even less pop because just not as pricey, not as coveted yet, maybe you, you think he's going to be it, I personally don't, but I mean, these for the longest time, I mean, $600, $700 for that, like, I, I love Luca so much more than Trey, and I think Luca was overpriced, so you only know how I think Trey was. And from there, like, again, these cards are incredibly cheap cards, or they should be in theory, that with the basketball boom, with the prism boom, with the PSA boom, it was just the perfect combination of everything that people wanted, I guess, in a card of modern players. I don't know why, but that's what the people wanted. It gets Whoa. the people going. Whenever cards like this start to fall back, and honestly, they've, I mean, from the peak, they've only fallen 50 percent that's not even really that bad i know people want to freak out and you know lose their minds i know trey's been doing pretty good and the hawks are in the playoffs so maybe this is a better example of what could be but still 300 bucks for that is still a lot and then last for modern product is the zion prism um here we can see that i mean as soon as they came out they were like 400 500 bucks um whenever the first ones come back from psa obviously you're paying a premium 
But still, I mean, even over this time, they, they basically just held that price in a year and a half in which the sports card market was absolutely on fire. And these cards couldn't do anything. And that's just your, your baseline example of what's going on here. Obviously, the Pelicans didn't do good this season, but Zion still looked really good. Like, I, I was pretty impressed, and he wasn't terribly injured from what I understand, so seems like a win to me. But again, you know, the market has to take on all these cards. There's already 18,000 of these, and if there's 18,000 Lucas, you know there's going to be more of these Zions, so it's only more to come as per usual. Um, again, here in a month span, the, uh, the Lucas had about four or 500 graded, I believe, and these have a thousand. So again, just being pumped out of PSA. And to go back and look at a market of what happens when a card is just printed in such supply, even of a goat, here we have the Kobe tops just raw. Um, looking here, we can see that for the longest time, this card was a dollar, two dollars, five dollars max, whatever, somewhere in there for 20 years. Um, and then obviously the Kobe death. So that's, you know, it's going to make this thing boom. RIP, of course. And sure, I understand it booming. I get why. But at the end of the day, a card that was one to five dollars for decades on end that suddenly is three to five hundred dollars that shows you where the market is at and how far back this could really go for some of the just more plentiful cards if people decide to pull out of cards in general personally i don't think it's going to happen that much that's why i talked about earlier i mean once all these people are in the market for cards i think you just develop a connection and have a love for them and you have an understanding so you can run through the market a little quicker there's just a lot of things a lot of connections that have already been made with people that i don't think is just going to simply disappear because some people sell their cards and onto a more modern example is this lebron james tops in between five to 15 bucks forever and then has absolutely boomed into the 500s at times thousands i don't even i don't even know i don't understand i don't really know where it's at right now i'd like to take a peek but yeah back down to like 400 or so still when there's just so many of these you know that's that's the risk you run that is the problem and i think that's what people are starting to realize with prism sure there's probably more tops i'd imagine but again a lot of modern basketball product has been getting printed a just non-stop so it's definitely an interesting time to see what happens with the modern basketball product personally i see modern basketball in kind of the bitcoin stage where it's just so high up there that a lot of the alternative coins are just going to do well simply on the premise that nothing should be that far and above the rest of the hobby personally i've gotten into the, a very small niche in the hobby with usmnt stuff because i think it's a real fun collectible enjoyable time where there's not a lot of stuff and there will be a lot of demand at some point because we're going to be at least somewhat competitive more so than we were before and that offers a lot of potential i think you have to be really picky with your spots in the hobby and where you're going because you can't just do the blanket uh buy up every young goat that people have been doing for a couple of years now you know i still see people doing that i don't really understand why especially when so much of the you know stuff before like 2010s even like just anything more than 10 to 15 years ago people just don't even think about when it comes to sports cards so personally i understand why a lot of consolidating is probably happening in these modern segments with a ton of pop i think it makes a lot of sense and Personally, I've been basically pulled out of basketball for like six months at this point because I kind of could see this coming. And I think that's the value of being in multiple markets. You know, I tell people not to overstretch yourself too much, but you do want to be involved in other aspects you enjoy. Personally, me, I like Pokemon, so I'm in on that. I also dabbled in basketball and football just a small bit. And being able to have different markets gives you a perspective on one. And whenever you look at basketball, it's not the most popular sport in America, and it's not the most popular sport in the world. So why does it have such an immense difference between its prices and the rest of the market when the pop's so high? It really doesn't make too much sense. Personally, that's why I'm in soccer. I enjoy it. I think it's fun. I think it's low pop. It's a great time. But I don't think this is some sort of market crash, everyone leaving cards. I think it's simply just people getting out of the stuff that made sense to get out on. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Anything you want to see from me, anything you want me to talk about in terms of cards, let me know down below in a comment. And on top of that, if you want to see more videos like this as soon as they go live, make sure to subscribe. And with that said, hopefully you have a wonderful day. And uh, peace.